Welcome to Attican Plays, Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to part 15 of our second playthrough of Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. Now, in 14, I talked about um, how we had lost so many workers here, and I wasn't really paying enough attention, and Matt, our good buddy Matt, uh, pointed out that many of these... Um, Flats had very few educated workers in them. And that's why we were getting such small amounts in the refinery. It was down to like 110, 120. Now, I bit the bullet and realized that, of course, we can't wait on our education system because we're backed up uh, in our education system. We can't wait on that to get people educated to get them in there, although that will, over time, will improve. But, um, I, had, I thought about it for a while and thought, well, how did I get in that boat where my refinery was so weak and this area over here was so weak? I mean, we were even getting, it was kind of low on the, um, the food. In fact, it's not great still. Uh, it's not great. Um, and I am going to blame the university because what happened <clears throat> was off, off camera, I would go out, I was experimenting with, well, how does this university actually work? And how do these hostels actually work? And you'll notice there's nobody in here now. That means they've all graduated. All the people that we brought in in the last episode have all graduated and gone back to wherever. And Lord knows where they've all gone to. But they've wandered off and rejoined society, I hope. I hope we haven't had a bunch of escapes. Let's see. We had uh, set last month, did we have any escapes? Oh, we had 18 escapes. That's a lot and a lot of deaths. So uh, <laughs> we have to work on this and work on our health care. We may have to start looking into pollution as well. But getting off topic. So let me get back to this. So what I was doing was taking people from these flats here and filling up these hostels. Well, when you're taking people out of these flats that could work in a, in a factory, what you're doing is taking people who could be working and producing fuel and bitumen because they are people who have a level one education. That means they have enough education to work in a regular job. And they're young people, typically, because they don't have any kids, they don't have any children. They aren't necessarily young, but they probably are. And you're taking your, the heart of your work uh, force and putting them in the university. And then when they graduate, they wander off to wherever. You don't know where they're going. You don't control that. And um, I think I was stripping out my own workforce. So I was getting this down to very low numbers of graduates or, or you know, educated people. So now what I've done, you see here's 88 educated people in this one. I bit the bullet and spent a ton of rubles just bringing in, let me look at, here's last month, spent 1.5 million rubles in recruiting immigrants from the Soviet bloc. So the Soviet bloc ones you get, uh, you get a mixture of educated and uneducated, uh, healthy and sick, most, more, mostly healthy, a fair amount of educated. So you can, you can build up a decent uh, uh, set of people, a very expensive, uh, and it gets more and more expensive as you go. It's up to like 24, what's it costing now? It's costing, uh, I can't, let me find one where I can actually do it. It's costing 24,000 rubles to invite 10 um, immigrants from the Soviet bloc now. So very expensive. And uh, I'd also uh, immig um, immigrated or uh, brought in uh, some people with dollars. Remember, we were running this up. I ran this up over $100,000 uh, using our little um, uh, currency exchange, <laughs> pun intended, our little currency exchange uh, method to get some dollars and brought them. And they're cheap, but they're uneducated too. So you end up with a lot of uneducated people. So I, I really did bite the bullet and spent a bunch of money to put some people back in this area here and some people back in over here in Roback, uh, which is an area designed basically to send people over here to the refinery to work. And you'll see we're a little better. We're about double where we were in terms of number of people. Want to have more than that. And what I'm hoping is that over time, 
if our education system can catch up and get some of these people graduated, I'll quit sucking them out of uh, here to put them in university and just let them stay here and work in the refinery. And over time, our refinery will have more and more people working in it. So we'll be doing better. So uh, thank you, Matt, for that uh, insight. That was excellent. And um, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, oh, well, the only other thing I did off camera, I did go out and build another uh, power plant. And you can see it's not producing much, even though it's got plenty of workers. And the deal with it is I, I hooked it up into, uh, it's, it's still nighttime. Let, let me run this until it's daytime. It's really, really hard to see this, especially the power stuff at night. So let's just let this run until daytime, and then I, then I can talk about it. But basically the idea is I did hook it into the main, to one of the power grids going back to the rest of, the, of, the, of our system, but I also hooked it in. I ran a line out of, out of this over to, if I can find it. Uh, let's see, where's our, over here. I ran it over here to... Um, Here we go. I ran, I ran it over here and, and set it up into this transformer so that I could then run a line into this, which is the railroad electrical connection. So what, I, what we have now is our own power plant providing the power for these trains. And the hope is that we'll quit importing so much oil from our, sorry, not oil, power from Molna to uh, power our trains that we now have our own power to, to uh, take care of that. Because remember, and this is, this is uh, very much uh, germane to what we're going to talk about in this episode, we are running diesel up this way. So all this, all this stuff going up to refinery Ropa and up in here and all the delivery systems here where we're doing our exports and moving our crops and all, that's all diesel trains. And, but uh, all the stuff down here where we're going out to the Molna oil field and back up to the Kaizena oil field and out all the way out to Molna to export iron, uh, that's all electrified track and electric trains. So um, that's a challenge we're going to have to overcome. So, I, and what I mean by that is we're going to figure out how we're going to handle that if we're going to try to move stuff from here where we're creating gravel and, and asphalt and concrete and all that stuff and, and bricks and, and prefab uh, components and all that. If we're gonna move that down to our new area where we're doing construction, uh, how are we gonna handle that, the whole diesel to electric um, uh, handoff? So, um, so I guess that answers one question is, do I want to move stuff from here down there or do I want to import it over at Mona? And yes, I do want to move it. So I definitely want to pick up uh, uh, construction materials here and move them all the way. The good news is we've got track running down through here. We've got a short connection and we can really hook into our line rather easily, I mean cheaply right through here and then run our trains that are going to carry all those construction materials over here to this general area where we're going to be doing our, our next big construction project. So that's all cool, but we have to figure out how, again, how we're going to go from diesel to electric. And then other, there's, there's just a ton of big challenges here. The other one is how in the world are we going to get all this stuff out of here? Because I set this up um, without really thinking about having enough train hookups that we could move this stuff long distances. So lesson learned for me, when I build these, they're gonna be set up to move this stuff, not just to the uh, construction management, uh, you know, nearby by truck, but also by train to other places out in your um, Republic. So gotta figure out how we're gonna get all this stuff out of here. So let's just see if we can't figure out what we need to move. We need to move uh, gravel. Actually, I'm gonna take some notes here. We need to move gravel. And we need to move asphalt and concrete. And maybe cement, I'm not sure. And we need to move the stuff that's in here. We need to move steel. 
Remember, eventually we'll have our own steel mill, but we're actually going to try to do this prior. But we need to move prefab panels. We need to move uh, bricks and wood and um, boards. Now, I'm not 100% about the wood if that's needed for construction, but uh, we'll probably have an open storage like this wherever we decide to move it to, and it'll have these same five items in it. We'll have a large aggregate store for the gravel, so that'll be one storage, and then two, 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 two. Okay, so we got two storage. Asphalt and concrete are going to have to have, <laughs> whether we man them or not, we're going to need asphalt and concrete. Uh, we're, we're going to need an asphalt um, storage in order to store asphalt. And we won't have any way to move it by train, I don't think. So we may just have to have uh, an industry down there. And then concrete, um, concrete export. I don't know if we can move concrete by train or not. I think we can move cement now. I think there's a new um, a new um, car for moving cement. Let's just see. Uh, cargo. Cargo. Oh, here we go. There's a hopper for cement. So we can move cement if that matters. I'm trying to think if it does. I think what we're probably going to do is forget about the cement, the asphalt, and the concrete and have those created up here, uh, you know, in our new area. And then move the other six goods uh, from our production site. So that won't be too bad. All right, so we've decided what we're going to move. And we know the general path we're going to take through here like this. That's definitely the shortest and the path of least resistance. And now we need to decide where are we going to move it to and how are we going to set that up. So we could, if we wanted to, set up maybe kind of a rail yard, kind of a, oh, let's see, what do we got here? We could get a cargo train station, could take in crops, alcohol, electronic components, electronics, chemicals, food mechanics, fabric, cloth, plastic, uh, steel, wood, prefab, boards, and bricks. So it, it'll take pretty much what we need. So if we put a cargo train station down here, we could add... Uh, a couple of fueling stations for diesel along here and run diesel trains along this electri uh, electrified track. That's not an issue. They will be slower than the really fast ones, but that's, speed is not the issue here. Uh, it really isn't. And we could set up some sort of receiving area down here and then have all of our construction set up near it and have the construction grab from that area to go do its thing. Um, that would work. And then the question is, to do its thing, what do we mean by that? So I'd originally set this up thinking, I've got Ironton, where is old Ironton? I've lost Ironton, of course. Over here. So over here, following, follow, follow these tracks over to here. The iron's coming from here. Our coal ore is coming from up here on the mountaintop. Our coal ore processing will be probably down here underneath it. And then what I, I, I'm trying to decide, do I put the steel right next to the coal ore processing? Then I wouldn't have to ship it. We wouldn't need to ship the steel. I'm, I'm sorry. We wouldn't need to ship the coal into the steel mill if we put the meal right next to it. But I'm really, I, the whole time I've been doing this, I've been envisioning a steel mill that was literally surrounded by neighborhoods of flats so that we could have all of our all of our workers for the steel mill um, walking to work 
and it would be very easy to you know build something up where we had a very effective steel mill and we could it's no big deal to ship the coal there we're going to be shipping the iron there anyway so that kind of begs the question of where are we going to put it and the whole time i've been thinking downtown in here somewhere coal ore processing steel mill over here but I'm kind of leaning now toward coal ore processing here and steel mill here. Does that make any sense at all? It kind of fits with the construction, but it's amazing how fast you run out of space. And again, I apologize. For those of you who, get, who just want a bunch of action, I'm probably not your guy anyway, but I apologize for thinking uh, while I play. It's just, I mean, it's just a horrible habit perhaps, but... Uh, I think games like this deserve some thought. So um, let's get on with it. Let's build. Let's build a downtown that's going to have asphalt and concrete as industries attached to it, so that we can build a downtown that'll supply the needs. It'll supply construction workers, and it will um, also supply us with asphalt and concrete because those are hard to transfer around. So let's go over here. Well, here, I've already started. Asphalt and concrete will be our industries. We're going to have cinema, fire station, hospital, at least one kindergarten, playgrounds, a pub, a shopping center, but no school. Remember, our school is going to be slightly different for this one, or at least that's the experiment we're going to try. So uh, what are we looking at here? If we use these 174s, we need about five flats. So five flats, asphalt and concrete, and all that stuff plus some storage. So let's, uh, let's see what we can come up with here. All right. Uh, and we want to have room for the school to come out. i tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to design the coal ore processing first to see how big a footprint it really has. So what we want to do is have our coal mine feed into a large aggregate store like so. And we don't have any construction office. Oh, man. So where are we going to put our construction office? <laughs> uh, crap. I think we'll have to decide where our... I think our goods are going to get dropped off here. And even if our equipment has to travel up here and it's a little bit slow, so be it. So our we're going to put a our first construction office. Let's just put it... Um, And we'll have to auto build it right there. Okay, and in and this one we are going to load up with um, our usual excavators and bulldozers. Okay. So now we can do our landscape, our terraforming again for free. So that's the way we want. All right, so here we go. Let's plan this out. We're going to put in a large aggregate store. And I hope, I hope, I hope, I haven't prevented us from putting Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> we may have to go to plan B. Uh, we're gonna have to look at this first. How are we gonna get the coal out of there? Because we've got this all crammed in here pretty nicely. It's, it's a beautifully efficient little thing, but I don't know if it's gonna... Hmm. Let's just see if we can get this. There's no way that's gonna work. Just no flipping way. No. Okay, where could we go with this? It looks like we. No. Yeah. Man, oh man. Oh 
We built such a nice tight little community up here. All these roads are going to have to be rebuilt. Let's see if we can put put this transfer engine in like that maybe and then have it run over here like this maybe maybe infrastructure below. It doesn't like the road, of course. Should have uh, thought of this before I committed to too much of this. Uh, okay, it doesn't like the road. Don't even like this road. Okay. <clears throat> now can we get a road through here? Well, 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 well. Okay, that worked. And that worked. Now, unfortunately, the angle we have to go, we can't put a road there, but I can live with having that one building be a fire hazard if that's the, all the fire hazard we have. Now if we can re replace the pathing As I recall, this pathing through here was kind of critical to getting some of these buildings connected to the um, connected to the uh, mine. I don't know, it might work. Let's see. Build those paths and let's just see what we've got here. If this uh, flat 
cannot get to the mine. As things currently stand, it cannot get to the mine. Might, uh, we haven't built this yet. That might do it. Let's just see if we can build that road right through there. Still can't do it. Still can't do it. If it's just, if it's just the one, uh, then it means I've got this entire flat, 137 workers to work in the kindergarten. That's no good. See if we move this. Oh, this is a 137. It's the same size. If we could move it down here. Now I can walk there. All right, good. <laughs> Goodness. All right, so now we're, we're back to having the ability to bring our coal out. We've got all of our flats can get to the coal mine, and they can get to the kindergarten and the train platform. All right, good deal. All right, so let's set up our coal ore processing. Large aggregate store right here. And it I want it we want it to split into two large aggregate stores.
check our roads, make sure we can get fire coverage on these things. Um, no way we're going to get down that mountain. Okay, so we've got two stores, one splitting into two, and then underneath those will be four coal ore processing plants. With their inputs. Make sure that's going to work. Ooh, ooh, that worked. <laughs> Didn't mean to sound so surprised, but I kind of am. Okay, so that's um, two of them, and they should feed into coal or processing should feed into a large aggregate store. Let's see here. Like this. Hmm. This might be tough right here. We'll see if this will work. How are we going to get it out of there? Let's see. Okay, it can go at a bit of an angle. It can go over here like this. So, And this one we know we can turn around. So, okay, let's do um, large aggregate store. Beautiful. <clears throat> Building in the way. What does that mean? It means it's turning it too tight. It's too tight a corner. So the corner of this building is getting in the way of the uh, conveyor line. So we need to run this maybe more like that.
Beautiful. Okay. So we'd like to see those two uh, roads. Let's look at roads again. Now, <laughs> in order to allow that to, uh, those conveyors to work, now we've got this giant hill we're coming off of with our road. It's not getting any better. Sucks. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can work with that. Probably not. My guess is not. Oh, oh my word. It did work. Huh, I'm shocked. Okay. So, we've got a road out of there. And we want to have a... Um, Cargo loading train station. No, excuse me. Aggregate loading. Train aggregate loading station. And unfortunately, both of its inputs are on one side, so we'll have to make it like this, which is okay. Again, I'm shocked that that worked. Okay, you can you can see it takes up a fair amount of space, and I really had wanted to build the um, housing so that the workers could walk in here, and then maybe make it take a train downtown and that may or may not work now let's see what we let's see what we come up with so we need so we need to duplicate this over here if we're going to have four of them and we are um, Oh wait, sorry, uh, first thing I need would be the coal ore processing plant. 
like so. So, okay, good deal there. And then these two need to feed out into an aggregate store. And we need to have road access to get... Need to be able to get this one... Out of here somehow. These two will feed another large aggregate store. Okay, so it says the pillars are in the way, so we're going to get rid of this piece of road right through here. Beautiful. Then see if our road can go back in there. Oh man, is it too low? Let's drive through here. Come on, come on. All right, it's too. This is too low. We're going to make a little valley for this to go in, and of course it's going to be, well, no, it isn't. Okay, hopefully that low point there will allow us to put in a conveyor like that. Of course it won't. That will. And then this one we can use a um, one of these guys. Uh, too much of an angle, of course.
road has got to go through somehow like like that maybe and any chance that that will fit uh, no it's too much of an angle close if we get rid of that road down there and redo it building in the way too big an angle okay that's not going to work Okay, let's just, uh, this road area should be solvable, so let's take it out, clear it out, and do what we have to do to get the conveyor to work. Angle too sharp. Where? There. I'm not sure what was wrong the other direction. And road. Oh. No problem there. And of course it's... <clears throat> Won't let us go under this one. Then we're going to need to lower this ground a little bit. And if I sound surprised that it worked, it's because I am. Okay. We might even be able to put this, give this a road connection for firefighting. Yes, we can. Give this a road connection for the same purpose. And now all we got to do is figure out how we're going to get from here to here, which would be our, this will have coal, these will, this will have coal, and that will be where we ship our coal. So... Let's see what we want. Conveyor. Beautiful. And we should be able to run a road. at that will you look at that do you suppose it is possible that a flat in here could walk to that train station and walk to these four I doubt it but let's look
this would be the definition of a crappy place to live but shoot Okay, four coal power processing or coal ore processing, 15 workers times four is 60 times three is 180 people. One little old flat would do it, 180 people. There's 179 people right there. Not even close. They could, however, walk to that bus stop, I think. They could walk to that bus stop. We could set up a bus line that either goes into town directly or goes up here to the train platform and then they could go into town that way. Oh, I forgot, can they walk to all of this? Everything except this one the second one can't walk to this one, so what can we do about that? I 
And it's because of this. This this cuts off our, our path. Is there any way to shorten this? Yeah, yeah. If we gave this guy a better path over to here, I'll bet he could do it. All right, we're going to go ahead and build... Nope, still can't do it. Well, that would actually work. This one would just have to supply workers for these three. This one could actually supply workers for all four. I don't think we would have trouble getting this one staffed at all. In fact, we could assign this one to work in these two and this one to work in these two to make sure that we don't have an imbalance. That would actually work. All right, all right. <laughs> what an awful place to live. All right, so um, there's our coal ore processing. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be producing a ton of coal. We've got a nice mine here at 57%. It's going to have a lot of workers working in it. We're going to have enough workers down here to man these nicely. We're going to bring coal in or in here, split it in, into two other places. Each one of those will supply two coal ore processing plants here and here. These two will dump into this uh, coal storage, which will dump into our uh, aggregate loading station. These two will dump into this one, which will also load there. And we will have trains coming out of here hauling coal. And our uh, originally, I think I think we're going to build this to haul the coal off to export first. Because uh, look at our money. Yeah, we're going to have to. We're going to do that. And then what we will probably do is think about putting our steel mill. I mean, we could still even run, these, these are coal storage, we could still run with conveyors and have a steel mill over here somewhere that had a conveyor system that brought it coal, or we could just run a simple little short train that runs it. That, that would be easy enough as well. So, um, cool. I don't know how long this is getting, it's probably getting pretty long, so uh, let's stop right there. Uh, we, at least we accomplished something. We got this uh, planned out going to cost a fortune to build it and we've got let's just review we've got thanks to Matt's comment we've got uh, some more educated folks I spent a lot of money but got some educated folks in here it should pay back as we get more people working in the refinery and start making better money on our fuel and bitumen good news is of course we've got plenty of oil so we're not buying oil we've still got we're still exporting boards and bricks and uh, prefab components and um, uh, what else? Uh, food and 
alcohol and clothes. So I'm going to uh, go offline and let this run for a while. And I, I promise I won't do any more of the planning. I, I think it'd be useful to see that. But I'll just let it run for a while and we'll accumulate some cash. And then when we have enough cash, we'll start talk, thinking about building our line, uh, hooking onto this line, deciding where our um, storage for construction materials is going to be, and then start the construction process on all of this. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Workers and Resources Soviet Republic video. Thank you.